now it's time for story time. Per crew. 
So he had to do a double-bladed axe to knock all the limbs off the log that had fallen down. Now, when trees are 120, 140 feet tall, <coughs> some of those limbs are the size of a small tree. So the, the double-bladed axe was razor sharp, which is why they needed somebody to fill in for somebody that got in an accident doing bucking. And he tore up his hand, and uh, I don't know how bad, but it was pretty bad. He's going to be off for the whole summer, so my dad took his spot. And uh, then once you get all the limbs off, then you have, in fact, I brought a tape measure to see. If you'll grab that end of it, please. And the, the bucking saw, which is manually done, was this long. That's how long his, that's how long my dad's saw was. Usually you had a handle on this end and a handle on that end, and two people would run it. But they didn't have that many people, so he had to run it by himself. And uh, he said, of course that thing he was, he had it sharpened, they, well they, the company kept it really sharp. And so he's cutting through these logs because sometimes the logs were bigger than that. So they had to actually cut a notch out so they'd have room to swing that saw on one end of the tree. So he's doing all that, and uh, like I said, there's three crews. Well, he'd been working out for a little bit, and one of the supervisors of the, the crew said, hey, you must spend the night up here in the, crew, in the logging camp instead of traveling back to Placerville every day, because it was about a two-hour drive up into the High Sierras Mountains. So my dad goes, Sure, I'll do that. So he got his stuff together. The, uh, his, the supervisor had an, another cop, and uh, they pitched a tent out there, and they logged until it was time to move. And they they pitched, they moved the tent up to a, a new logging area, and they, it was a really nice spot because they had a well. It's a mountains. They found flat land under a little oak tree to put the tent. And, uh, and, well, flat land, level land is hard to find in a mountain. But what's better is they had a flume made by the gold rush people. They built a flume to, to put water into their sluice boxes where they gold, nine for gold, but it was big enough to give water to the town down below, and it was still going. So we had nice, fresh, icy, cold, snow runoff water going down that so they're up there doing pretty well at the campsite. Uh, my dad said that, well, I'll, I'll use his word for it. He, he says, the other crew, one of the other crew members had a sleazeball of a guy. He's older than the rest of them. He called him a sleazeball. He wasn't honest. He was, you know, it was tiny. They only got paid by, the, by knocking the trees down, cutting the trees down. They got paid for that. But then he had to do a lot of cleanup and that's kind of free work. And he always seemed to be missing during the work he had to do for free before he could move on. And so they were going to move camp and he's missing. Well, my dad wasn't feeling well, so he goes, oh man, you know. And he said, go lay down for a bit and when you feel better, come back. So he went up to the tent and got the tent. Well, dad's in laying in the tent. And here's a chainsaw. It sounded pretty close. And then he heard it, but he was pretty sick. And he was just laying there and he thought, oh, man, my stomach is really hurting me like this. And then the chainsaw quit and he heard the groaning of the tree that's falling. And then he heard the whistle at the top of the tree. It goes about 100 miles an hour to go that fast coming down these big old giant trees. And it sounded like instead of kind of going away from him, he was getting closer.
And he, he's up there and he says, he kind of knocked him sense for a while and he kind of went, where are these? He's trying to get out from the tent. He finally got himself out from the tent and walked up to this guy and he's up there trying to put his chainsaw away. And look what I did. Like, he, you know where he dropped that tree? It doesn't matter. And he goes, come here. And walked him down there and he looked at this tent, tree laying right across it. And hit the it, it hit the oak tree when it came down and blew up, blew that oak tree up with little chunks of wood. And that's what took out the cot, took out the top of the tent and stuff. But the cot wasn't broken out. My dad would have been caught between, say, a raised cot and the trunk of that tree. And he probably would have suffocated right there. But God had made the oak tree blow up and take the cot out so he was on the ground so that the branches of the tree would help hold it up instead of his chest or his legs or his head or something. And God, God saved him. The, the guy never apologized, he said. He, you know, the sleazeball didn't apologize. But I, from what I understand, he showed up at church the next weekend. He hadn't been in church for a long time because he knew that he was looking at a miracle there. Whether or not we enjoy a Sabbath sermon I hope Ricky's sermon isn't what I just said. It was. No. <laughs> no, it's all right, Ricky. No, uh, no, whether it's a Sabbath sermon that you just didn't enjoy, or whether it's some guy that practically killed you, God has his way of drawing people to him. Amen. And sometimes it's not about you. It wasn't about my dad. It's about Jesus stepping out doing something to draw somebody in, whether it's a person standing in front of me, meeting the pastor, and really enjoying that sermon, or a tree falling, and you surviving, that's your blessing, but that person going to church because he witnessed a miracle that day. God has his way of, way of drawing people to him, and sometimes it's just not about us, it's about the other person. Okay, the car heads for prayer. Dear Jesus, I want to thank you for taking care of my dad that day, or I wouldn't even be here. I want to thank you for that we need to, uh, for the you drawing other people to you, and that the Holy Spirit can use us. <coughs> Let him use us in whichever manner that you want him to do that. For Jesus' sake, amen. amen.